Hey guys, it's Bob Morreale here with The Tuning School, and on today's Tech Tuesday, we're going to be discussing artificial neural networks, and as a tuner, why you should care. And trust me, you should care. Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm the kind of guy that likes to kind of cut to the chase, and like I talked about in the intro, you should probably cut to the chase, so I'm going to do it. So basically, why do you care about artificial neural networks? Well, they've been around for a couple years already in the Dodges, basically all the way back to somewhere in the 2012 range when they switched to variable cams, but that's just an indicator of what's coming in the future. So that's really why you should care, because they're coming in GMs in the very soon manner. You'll see them come in the GM vehicles, and not just that, I suspect the other manufacturers will adopt them pretty rapidly. So why do I think this? Well, the reason I think this is it's much cheaper for the factory to simply train an artificial neural network how to run an engine than it is for them to pay calibrators for thousands of man hours, tons of time, tons of development time, when they can simply train an artificial neural network to go run that engine, here's the values, just like a puppy. Train the puppy, this is what I want you to do, this is what I want, how I want you to do it, and then it refines itself and gets better at its job over time, which is what the car will do, the engine will do from the computer controls. So let's get into it a little bit, shall we? So this is going to be an introduction video into what artificial neural networks are and then how they're currently being used on vehicles and look in the future a little bit. We will not go in deep on how neural networks work. They're extremely complex. We could probably get to that in a future video. So what is an artificial neural network? Well, it is designed to learn and recognize patterns in your data, just like your brain. So the original concept for an artificial neural network came from your brain and my brain. We have like, I believe, hundreds of millions of receptors and all sorts of brain cells and well, maybe not all of us, but there are brain cells in our brain and they bounce off each other and you end up with decisions and you can see patterns in your data. Well, it was designed to learn and recognize patterns in data, just like your brain using these things called neurons and cells. So after training an artificial neural network, it can then make predictions by detecting similar patterns. So if, for example, you've taken your car up 5,000 feet in elevation one time, it can see that and go, oh, here we go again. This is how we need to tweak this so it'll run better. So that's really cool. Someone actually thought we should put this in a car. Great, no problem. So originally, going back a little history on these things, they were only good for a yes, no decision. So back in the 50s and 60s, the computer power wasn't really there for anything more than a, you know, is this color blue? Uh, and really not all that useful. So it was largely unused until the 90s when it really got woken up and some experts started looking at artificial intelligence again and said, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, we can create this artificial neural network to look for patterns in data because there's always patterns in data and then we can make decisions based on that. Here's what you need to understand. A neural network is not task oriented. Like tables, like me, like I'm used to programming. If then statements, it's not looking for an if then statement. It's not looking for, if the mass airflow sensor says this, then I'm going to inject this much fuel. It doesn't operate that way. It's looking for patterns in the data. And so therefore, it is extremely powerful. However, it's really only designed to do one thing at a time. The artificial neural networks today are only designed to learn one subject, but very, very well. And they do this using inputs, and then it bounces it off of neurons, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But the current limitations prevent them from taking over the world, which is good for all of us. So what does that mean? That means that an artificial neural network can be really, really good at predicting something, such as the weather, maybe hurricane directions and things like that. But that same artificial neural network doesn't understand military strategy. If you follow where I'm going with that, that's a good thing. So let's go forward with it. A modern artificial neural network can determine not just if it's a dog or a cat, they've gotten really good now, but they can tell you what kind of a dog or a cat it is. And so you've actually already seen this if you've been on websites at all that use a CAPTCHA in order to figure out if you're really a human. And so what they do is they say, look at this picture and tell me out of these 10 pictures, click everyone that has a dog or a Dalmatian or something of that nature. Artificial intelligence and the artificial neural networks power that. That's how it does it because it looks for patterns in the images. That same artificial neural network wouldn't be good at pretty much anything else at the moment. So here's the thing and how it actually applies to us as tuners and tuning in the automotive world. Uh, you cannot simply change the network. It's Because it's not task oriented, it doesn't simply have a mass airflow table. So you could just say, hey, I put a supercharger on and I'm gonna need you know, 20% more airflow so that I get 20% more fuel. It doesn't work that way. So the problem is you can't simply change it because it operates based off weights and biases that guide it to its decision on how much airflow you actually have 
based on its training at the factory. With the factory computer and the factory engine, the factory heads, the factory cam, the factory exhaust, all that stuff. So if you go and modify the vehicle, the artificial neural network is pretty much out of place and it's extremely difficult. You can't simply lift it up like you would a traditional table. So let's look at Dodge applications. Why did we choose that? Because they've had these for quite some time. And so in the Dodge applications, they chose to start using artificial intelligence on the airflow side. So the traditional airflow model using a mass airflow sensor or a speed density table like VE, um, that's been replaced. And it's replaced with what we would call a living airflow model. Why did I call it that? Well, because it's an artificial intelligence the artificial neural network sits there and it is capable of honing and improving itself over time. So this allows, and this is really one of the driving factors, changes in the vehicle's environment or wear and tear on sensors, it can actually monitor those things and say, hey, you know, I've seen this pattern over time and this pattern means this, so therefore I need to do that. So it's fairly intelligent in that capacity. But here's the problem for me and you trying to tune these vehicles, our customer might bring us a supercharged whatever it is, and in the future it might be a supercharged GM, not that far off, where they put a supercharger on it, didn't have it from the factory, well here's the problem. So the airflow values, they go away. You can't simply say, hey man, I have more airflow, so I want more fuel. And they replace things such as spark. You won't have a spark table in the future. What are you gonna do if you don't have a spark table in the future? You'll have a spark artificial neural network. But like I said, that's extremely difficult because you don't have spark values at that point in the future either. You're gonna have numbers from zero to one with weights and biases. So what do we do with this? Here's the upside. Every neural network is really good at one thing, whether it's Spark or Airflow or whatever it is. So in the future, because we're looking at Dodge and we're using that as our basis for experience here, we know they're going to apply this to GMs and probably other ones. We're working on methods by which we can create calculators and neural network creators so that when you get those vehicles in the future, you can replace that neural network with one that will allow you, the user, to create some input and say, well, I supercharged this thing, this is the boost curve, and this is where I really would like the spark to fall. And so we're working really hard on creating those tools for you guys in the future so that as tuners, we can ensure the longevity of our industry. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video about artificial neural networks. Please leave a comment below and tell us your experience with neural networks if you've done any tuning with them whatsoever. So for more high performance tuning knowledge, be sure to follow us on social media. And as always, stay tuned. Uh, be sure to. Knowledge, <laughs> be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on social media, and spin in a circle. And it's also on your shoulder, things of that nature. Ah!